Thank you. Good morning, Barons. How are you today? So, as you heard, my name is Rich Madalino. I'm the state senator who represents the east side of Wisconsin Avenue. So if you are from the Chevy Chase part of the BCC area, I'm your member, your representative in the state senate. So for those of you on the Bethesda side, you may know the name Susan Lee. And she is the state senator who represents the Bethesda neighborhoods to the west of Wisconsin Avenue. So I have a question for you. Do people realize what's coming up tomorrow? What starts tomorrow in the state of Maryland? Early voting starts tomorrow. And in fact, uh, the, the nearest early voting center is within walking distance of this building, the Lawton Center. And the town of Chevy Chase is the nearest early voting center. How many people here are 18? All right. How many of you are registered to vote if you're 18? There you go. How many of you are planning to vote? There you go. So if you're not registered to vote already and you are 18, you can show up at an early voting center, register to vote, and vote. You can't do that on election day in Maryland. You can only do that during early voting. So if you still want to register to vote and you're not registered and you want to vote, you can do it for the next from Thursday to the following Thursday in the state of Maryland. So don't forget to get out and vote. If you're not, are there people here not 18? Oh yeah, there. You can still help with the election. You can be a judge, better yet, you can be an election worker. You can go out and hand out materials. That's how I started. My mother put me in front of our polling place in Silver Spring when I think I was five years old to hand out literature for the candidate she was supporting. I found it fascinating and here I am a little less than 50 years later and I'm still doing it. So, if you are interested in politics, there's a lot of ways to get involved. Pick a candidate, get out, vote, and help them win because it's critical for our state, for our country moving forward. Okay, how many here have heard of this rather obscure Broadway musical, Hamilton? Oh, okay, who's going to come up front and do the first cabinet rap battle with me? People know that? Oh, okay, okay. That may not be the appropriate language for this morning. But what is Hamilton about? Hamilton is about a fundamental debate between Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson about the future of the federal government. That's a battle that started in the 1780s and 90s. That debate of what we're gonna talk about this morning and all day long is still going on about what's the nature of the federal government, the state governments, but at the heart, the fight between Hamilton and Jefferson is about the role of the federal government and whether or not the federal government was going to be engaged in supporting what they liked, they called then a system of internal improvements. Was the federal government going to collect taxes and build roads and canals? Was the federal government going to support schools? Were the state governments going to support schools? That debate has been going on since the beginning of our, of, our, of our country. So you are participating today, you are participating in this election that something goes back to the very founding of our nation. The fact that there's a debate, that there's vicious debate sometimes, nothing new for our country. But what is new is a rethinking of many of what have become fundamental ideas about the nature of our government, our state and federal government um, in providing services. And that's what I'm supposed to talk a little bit about today is education and um, health care and what the state and federal governments are doing in that area and what they should be doing and what your voice might be um, helpful in helping frame that debate. Now, I'm before you as your representative in the State Senate. I'm also a BCC dad. So I have a daughter at the school who I'm not going to embarrass. Okay, that's her. So um, Katie, who as many of you know is a sophomore, is my daughter. So um, you, you, you may have seen me. My, my work is done here. I've, been, I've embarrassed my daughter, so I can just go for the day. So I'm, I'm happy to be with you at football games and at uh, this weekend's cheerleading competition. So um, I'm, not just a, I'm not just a speaker, I'm not just a senator, I'm also part of the BCC family. 
Uh, one, of the, one of the major issues that we are facing as a community is what has happened over the last several decades has been a conversation about is your education, your education here as high school students, your continuing education through higher education, community college, university, wherever you go, is that a public good or is that a private luxury? Is your education something that benefits all of us and therefore all of us have a sense and a responsibility to help pay for it? Or is your education something that benefits you and you alone and therefore you, your families, have to pay for it? That's been the fundamental conversation about higher education and it's bleeding down into now secondary education with a fight over continuing to fund public schools or putting more money into private schools. Now, that goes back to the fundamental debate between Hamilton and Jefferson. Because is it, is it about raising tax revenues and funding those good public schools? Now in this country, we set the international standard. We were the first country to have universal elementary school, then universal primary, secondary school, then universal access to higher education. That's an amazing accomplishment that has powered our country, powered our democracy. But now we're at a point where other countries are doing it, other countries are doing it better, other countries are funding it differently. Is it right? And this is the fundamental debate we're having in the state of Maryland. You have this beautiful school. We all know that for almost all of us who live in the BCC community, we are wealthier than most of the other people in our state and in our country and that wealth provides for amazing facilities. Do you have a responsibility, do all of us have a responsibility to make sure that every high school student in the state has the opportunity to have a facility like this? Or are we okay with everyone just in Montgomery County having facilities like this? Because we as a state, we as a country have decided that the best way to fund schools is through things like county governments or even in other parts of the country even smaller levels of government, individual municipalities. Imagine if Bethesda and Chevy Chase alone were their own little school district. What would this school look like if you only had to raise the revenues from these communities and not share it with any other part of Montgomery County? So, it is an incredibly important question about how we provide fairness and equity to young people all over the state of Maryland. And whoever is elected governor, because believe it or not, on education policy, it's the, it's the governor, it's the local elections that are far more important for K to 12 and for higher education policy than the federal election. So who we elect as governor, who we elect to the legislature, is gonna be critical in making these decisions. And we're about to rewrite all of the funding formulas for the state of Maryland over the next two years. I've been part of a commission that's been looking at massive changes to the way that we fund schools and the way that we organize schools. The way that we hire teachers, train teachers, pay teachers, and the way that their, what their days look like in order to help all of you succeed even more. The way that the expectations that we have for all of you and whether or not um, what level of skill you need to attain and when and how we can make 11th and 12th grade possibly even better so that when you walk out of this building, when you walk out of any high school in the state of Maryland, that you in fact are going to be walking out not just with a high school diploma, but with an associate's degree and 60 credits so that you are that much further along towards getting a bachelor's degree and moving through college as quickly and as cheaply as possible and so that you can get out, get out and on with the rest of your life wherever that, wherever that takes you. Now healthcare, Interestingly, is another area where is healthcare, is being in good health a private benefit or is it a public good? We've had this conversation for a while in this country that having good public health, right? If you're sick, potentially everyone around you is going to get sick. So therefore, helping you make sure you're healthy is a way that keeps everyone healthy. But as medicine becomes more complicated and more expensive, do we all have a responsibility to help pay for that? Do you need to pay for that more if you make more money? Because in essence, that's what we're talking about when we talk about a national healthcare system is making sure that people pay for healthcare through their taxes 
as opposed to paying it individually through their salaries or through the bills that they get charged. And that probably is going to be the best way for us, if you look around the world, for us to make sure we continue to have a healthy functioning society. But because we have not been putting money into a national system or a state system, as you get sick, if so many of your relatives get sick, if you don't have insurance, if you don't have good insurance, that actually is a way that it, 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 financially, it can financially ruin your family because you cannot pay the bills is that fair? You're the one that got sick. Should you be the one that pays the price or do we all have a responsibility for helping to, to, to cover part of those costs? In our country, in our state, we have not been keeping up like the other parts of the world on education and on healthcare. We have decided that those are private goods, those are private luxuries, and therefore, it's up to you to make the money and to pay for it yourself as opposed for all of us for sharing it together. And your generation is going to have to make that decision about whether or not you want that system to continue or you have a different, you have a different path, a different vision in mind. But we're at one of these points, and I think this is why you picked the term democracy, we're at one of those points where you feel like the two sides are almost 50-50 in, in the struggle for what direction we're gonna go in. And if, you are, if your sense is the other side from the other perspective from you is winning out, that we're definitely going in the wrong direction. But we need, we need to have a strong public education system, we need to have a strong public health system, in order to make sure that we have a functioning society and it's up to all of you to make sure we continue to have these debates and put this money into our system. Now, I've gone on already too long. Um, so Aiden, and I know you have a series of questions. So the way that this is supposed to work is you have a series of, they have a series of pre-